So we've looked at output and using the print command to do something like this so we can print hello. But what about if you want to do that multiple times? If I want to print the word hello 10 times, for example, how might I do that in my program? Well, we can use copy and paste and other features within the IDE. So I could copy that and I could paste it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That would do the trick. So that gives me 10 hellos. Um, as you can see, I was having to count there. So I'm only doing it 10 times, but if I was doing it more times, it would get more fiddly. And if I want to change the number of times, um, again, I'd have to count them up. And if I wanted to do you know, 12, I'd have to count them and do a couple more. If I wanted to do eight, I'd have to do uh, two fewer. But what about um, if I want to change the number of times to say hello? Well, um, obviously you just count it up and change the number. What about if I want to change what I've actually said? What about if I change my mind and I want to say hi? Or if I'm converting this to another language and I want to say bonjour or uh, guten tag, for example. Well, um, IDEs have various features that allow you to do that. So idle, for example, has a replace facility, which is a bit like the one in Word. Um, Replit has an interesting feature. So if you if I double click um, this here, you notice it highlights all of the words uh, hello. And if I click the right mouse button, um, there's this option here to change all occurrence occurrences and I can I can do that which is a little bit unusual I think um, but obviously that does the trick um, also Python has this rather neat multiplication facility doesn't it so actually you probably wouldn't need to do that so if I wanted to do hello I could do something like this and um, if I want each one to start a new line I can use the backslash and then I can multiply so if I want 10 hellos I can do something like that I get the extra gap at the bottom because I get the um, backslash n at the end but it's you know near enough we might be able to work with that but actually a better idea is to print once and tell the computer to repeat it so quite often in a program we have a need for repetition we don't literally repeat the code uh, that would be what we call redundancy that would be seen as inefficient and a waste of our time typing out the code and a waste of, waste of space within the program and there are two main ways to do that so the first case is where we know how many times we want to do something. So if we want to print this um, word 10 times, that's a slightly um, artificial example. But maybe if we're printing out a times table, for example, we know we want to do it um, 12 times. Or if we're picking lottery balls, we know we want to do that six times. And most of the time, we know how many times we want to do something. We might not know how many times we want to do it um, when we write the program, but by the time we get to that stage in the execution of the program, uh, we know how many times, and the number of times can be a variable or the result of a calculation. But there are also times when we don't know how many times we want to do something. So, for example, validation or checking somebody's password. When they type a value in, they might get it right first time, or they might never get it right. So we don't know how many times we want to do that. Or to pick another example, if we want to find out all the square numbers up to 500, I don't know off the top of my head how many there are, but we can just keep working out square numbers until we get to 500. So there's two situations in which you want to repeat. You might want to repeat a fixed number of times or a number of times that we've calculated, or we might want to um, keep going until something happens or while a particular situation is true. So in the next two videos we're going to have a look at those two types of loop. And um, Before we move on to those I will say that I find that students who teach themselves to program tend to use while for lots of things even though for um, it tends to be more straightforward in a lot of situations. So I would think about using for first before I uh, think about while.